You now learned, I'm sure, more than you really wanted to learn about total costs and average cost and marginal cost and the short run and the long run and all these different cases. And so we've we, we've finished completely discussing the cost minimization problem, which was given Q, what's total cost? So we solved that. And we had graphs with Q on one axis and total cost in dollars on the other axis, and we had all those different kind of shapes. For example, that shape. But we had other kinds of shapes. Now we move to the topic that the firm is really interested in. The firm is not really interested in the cost minimization problem because the cost minimization starts with saying given Q. Well, the firm isn't given Q. The firm can pick a Q. It gets to choose Q. And so the cost minimization problem is artificial in the sense that it assumes that Q is given to the firm and it really isn't. It'll turn out that having solved the cost minimization problem is extremely useful in solving the problem the firm is really interested in. But it's not the problem the firm is really interested in. The problem the firm is really interested in is profit maximization. We usually denote profit by the lowercase Greek letter pi because the other meaning of the Greek letter pi in mathematics, which is the, you know, the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its, its uh, diameter or its radius, is not um, used very much in economics. So pi is profit, it's total revenue minus total cost. Total cost, you know tons of stuff about. Total revenue is pretty easy. Price times quantity. It's the amount of money that your customers give to you. The amount of money that the customers give the firm. And we'll get to graphs of total revenue soon enough. Students sometimes ask, why do we assume that firms maximize profit? Maybe firms do other things, like, for example, maximize sales. Well, if a firm maximizes sales, I would argue that the reason it's maximizing sales at the expense of profit is because by maximizing sales, it can gain new market share, perhaps drive rivals out of business or lower their market share, perhaps get customers used to buying their product, and so in the future, they're going to earn more profit. In other words, you might sacrifice short-run profit for market share in order to get long-run profit, but the goal of the firm is to maximize profit. And how you trade off short-run versus long-run would be the something that you'd study in a course that dealt with dynamic economics, which we're not going to do uh, very much of. So profit maximization is the goal of the firm. Now, in modern economics, so economics of the last, microeconomics of the last 30 years, instead of thinking of the firm as being a monolithic entity, we think of the firm as being composed of different groups of people. Uh, the board of directors, upper management, middle management, lower management, blue-collar workers, lots of different people working within the firm, and they don't have the same objectives. They all have their own individual objectives, and they may conflict with the objectives of the firm as a whole. Uh, clearly, what the upper management at Lehman Brothers was doing before the financial crisis of 2008 was completely inconsistent with the best interests of the Lehman Brothers shareholders, because the firm went bankrupt, the managers lost their jobs, but of course kept all the money that they earned while they were driving Lehman Brothers to extinction, and the shareholders lost everything. So it's certainly not the case that firms are monolithic profit-maximizing entities. Everybody who works at the firm has exactly the same objective. However, that's not the focus of this class. And so for the purposes of this class, we're going to make the much more old-fashioned assumption that firms are monolithic entities that just exists to maximize profit. So let's do a graph. 
if quantity is zero, then total revenue, and I'll abbreviate total revenue by TR, is equal to zero, because total revenue is price times quantity, and so if your quantity is zero, you're not selling anything, your customers aren't going to give you any money. So total revenue curves always start at the origin, at the zero, zero point. Furthermore, they're upward sloping. When when you sell more output, revenue goes up. But exactly how? Is it convex? Is it concave? Well, um, we'll talk about some examples. It turns out we're going to concentrate on a particularly easy case. For now, it's upward sloping and it starts at the origin. So that's total revenue. Suppose we connect total revenue and total cost. So we draw one graph with both total revenue and total cost on it. I'm going to try to use a really simple example. So for total cost, I'll draw it that way. And for total revenue, I'm just going to draw a straight line. Now, by the way, you can figure out what kind of total cost curve this is. It starts at the origin, so it's not a short-run total cost curve, because short-run total cost curves start with fixed cost, which isn't zero in the short run. So this has to be a long-run total cost curve. And, and it turns out it's a long-run total cost curve that reflects decreasing returns to scale, because things get proportionally more and more expensive as you increase Q. And decreasing returns to scale was type C. So that's just a little quiz for how well you remember the previous chapter. Profit is total revenue minus total cost. So it's the gap between these two things. If total revenue is equal to total cost, profit's zero. That's true at q equals zero, because both total revenue and, in this example, total cost are zero. And it's also true here. TR equals TC, so where TR equals TC, profit is equal to zero. In between the two points I just drew, total revenue is here, and total cost is below it, so profit is positive. So it looks something like this. And to the right, total revenue is here, total cost is above it, so profit's negative. The firm wants to maximize profit, so it goes to where profit is a peak. We call this Q star. So when I use an asterisk as a superscript, I'll often call it Q star. And that's the profit maximizing level of output.